guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my July TBR. I have a very busy July. I am traveling to Book Bonanza in the beginning of the month, and then I'm going to a Polycon at the end of the month. I'm getting my kitchen remodeled, and that's going to be about a week. I'm going to a Backstreet Boys concert. It's going to be a very busy month, and I'm trying to read as much as I can, but we will see. I have so many I want to get to, both physically and on audio and ebook, and I have my two book clubs, so I'm just going to go ahead and get into my TBR. First up is my Historical Hellions book club pick, and that is Ransom by Julie Garwood. I'm so excited to finally get to this. I have been meaning to read this all year and Samantha and I picked it for July's pick for our book club and this one is book two to The Secret so I believe it follows two of the side characters from The Secret. The Secret is one of my favorite historical romances so I'm very excited to get to this one. And for Ravish by Romance we are reading The Song of the Marked which is something that I heard from Sam from Sam Reads a Little. She read this and really loved it so when Lacey and I were choosing our next read we hadn't read fan seen a little bit so we decided to go with this one. My library does have the audiobook so I'm really excited about that. I have no idea what it's about. I have a really hard time reading fantasy synopses and figuring out what they're about enough to tell you so all I know is someone did say it's like from Blood and Ash so hopefully I enjoy it and I'm excited for our chat for our live show. Then I have a few historicals on this list. I have The Gift by Julie Garwood. I really want to read more of her backlist and so I'm going to start with this one. I've heard it is a pirate romance and I read Saving Grace and I didn't love it which is the last one I read by her so hopefully this is a hit that's all I know it's a pirate romance but I really want to read that and then I am going to be reading three bodice rippers for a video which I'm super excited for I've been meaning to do this video since December and I just never did but I'm finally going to sit down and do it so I'm going to read The Flame of the Flower by Kathleen Woodowis which is one of the first if not the first bodice ripper I'm pretty sure that's this one and then the original copy of Whitney My Love my copy is so battered but I did get an original copy it, the newest one has been redone so this is a first printing. Excited to read this. Very controversial as well. And then I'm going to read a new to me author, which is Christine Monson. This is Stormfire, another iconic bodice ripper. This one's massive though. I don't know why all these are so big. This is almost 600 pages, but I'm super excited for my reading log for that. So I'm going to read these three. They're definitely going to hopefully be done right after book bonanza. My goal is to have it all done by then. But then I also want to read a lot more fantasy romance this month. So I have The Inadequate Air on my list to read. I really love The Bridge Kingdom and I do have Audible now and I was going to listen to this on Audible but it did come out. I don't know if I'll love listening to fantasy. I'm going to try that out with our Ravish by Romance book and maybe just read this physically because I need to absorb a lot more. And this one's long too. Oh my gosh, this is over 500 pages. I've been reading... 450 plus page books so much in June and I don't know why I keep on doing that. So I'm just reading chunky books and my next one's chunky too and I have a bunch of chunky books on this list but I'm gonna, I'm, why not read long books during the summer when I have the time? I also have A Lady for a Duke, which is also super long. It's like 450 pages, 449, but I've heard amazing things and I've been meaning to read it since it came out, since before it came out, because I did get an arc, but I just never got the time to read it and I wasn't super in the mood for historicals, but this one has a trans heroine and she falls for her best friend and it sounds really, really good. So I'm very excited for that one. I also have book lovers. I finally just get to this. Some of my friends have read it and really enjoyed it and I really loved Beach Read. I thought People We Meet on Vacation was okay but I'm excited to read about two people in the publishing industry so I don't know yet if I want to listen to this or read it physically. I've read all of her books physically so I kind of want to read this physically but we'll see about that. Another very long book is also Ivy by Willa Nash but Tori from Live a Novel Life read it and really, really loved it, and she has me very intrigued by this now. Again, four, 500 pages. I don't know why authors are writing such long books, but this one, I think Tori had said follows three different couples, and it's in college with lots of secrets, so very excited to read some from Willa Nash, which is Devney Perry's pen name. Have not read from her yet. This might have been on my last month's TBR, and I didn't get to it, so definitely want to get to that this month. And then, because book four in the series comes out, soon if not today i don't remember but that is anna huang i have twisted hate which let's see how long this one is 500 pages again oh my gosh it is the 
hate to love romance. I don't know if it was someone's sibling. Is it the heroine from book one? Maybe her sibling? I don't know, but people love this one. I'm excited to read it. Then I really want to read Hidden Waters by Catherine Cowles. This is book three in this series. I've really enjoyed books one and two. This one is about the character who lived in a really bad environment where they believed in like all these conspiracy theories, didn't believe in doctors, thought everyone was out to get them, and had very traditional male-female roles, and the females were treated horribly, and the she got out and I think she becomes really good friends with this person. They might have to like live together. I don't remember. So they are new roommates and he is has a damaged past of his own. Very excited to read that one as well. And I was also sent Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley from St. Martin's Press. And this one, I think the cover is gorgeous and I have not read too many trustly published books this year, but this one's one that I definitely want to read. So our heroine was actually in a dating show and rejected the proposal so everybody hates her. Now she is working in San Diego's newest cupcake bakery and the owner is a professional football player and a reporter mistakenly believes they are an item and they are gonna fake a relationship. So this sounds so good and I'm very excited to read it. I do want to read My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey at Tori from Live a Novel Life has read it and really enjoyed it. I was a little bit skeptical because it's like cozy mystery bounty hunter teacher romance but it's short and sweet, what I need when I'm reading all these 500 page books. I hope I like it, it sounds like the perfect summer read. Then, this one I want to get to before Polycon, and that is Wolf Gone Wild by Julia Cross. I went to Barnes & Noble, they had tons of indie romances. I decided to pick this up because, again, Tori, I was texting her and she said she loves this series. I've never read it, and Julia Cross, I believe, is going to be at a Polycon. I don't know if she's going to be both a book bonanza and a Polycon. I'm going to save this for a Polycon because I'm driving there, so I'm going to try to save some books for driving rather than having to fly to Texas. I'd much rather drive with more books than fly. So hopefully I will get this done by a Polycon and meet her. This is a werewolf romance, I believe. And that's all I know. He has been unable to shift for three months and he's convinced that he's cursed and wants the help of a witch. So that sounds good. I am very excited and then I'm super excited to read this one. So I went to a baseball game and on Instagram I was like drop your baseball romance Rex, because I need them all because I love baseball romances. And this one was one of the recommendations and Samantha Christie is going to be at Book Bonanza. So I'm hoping to read this within the next week. This is Catching Caden. He is a baseball player and apparently he hits a home run and it shatters the face of the heroine and she is a model and it ruins her career and they become friends. So it says it's his mission to help her rebuild her life because he feels horrible at what he did and I'm excited. I'm excited for a new author. I'm excited for sports romance. Hopefully I like this. Okay, so now we have all of my ebooks and audiobooks I have. So we have Lost Hearts by Lexi Blake. This one I'm trying to get more into romantic suspense and I believe these men, I don't remember if they don't have a memory of what they went through but they're part of some like mercenary group and it's a spinoff of one of her other series. I found the audiobook and so I decided to pick this one up. I know Lexi Blake is really well known for her romance to suspense so I have that one. I have Tough Guy by Rachel Reed which is book three in this series. They are all MM hockey romances and I wanted to skip to Shane and Ilya's book two which is book six in the series. They do have a sequel book but someone did tell me I should probably read them in order so I want to read this one next have the audiobook, so hopefully I will get to that soon. I also have Beautifully Broken Redemption, which is by Katherine Cowles. I am loving Katherine Cowles lately, if you couldn't tell, and my Hoopla has this entire series on audio, so I definitely have this one checked out. I think this is the last in the series, if I remember correctly. So it says that she keeps her darkest scars hidden from the world out of necessity, and he has demons that are haunting him, and tragedy strikes, so she's fighting to protect her family, and he will do anything to keep her and her loved ones safe and that means getting married so I don't know if it's a marriage of convenience it looks wedding-y on the cover so I'm very excited for that one. I also have Nobody's Duke by Scarlett Scott, which I know Avery from Ava's Romance Reads absolutely loves. And this is actually going to be in a book box that I have recently bought. Um, not this book, but this author. It could be this book. I don't know. But this one, I believe, has been compared to, again, The Magic. And so, whoa, a dangerous man killed her husband in a political assassination, threatens her, she gets a bodyguard, and oh yeah, he's no stranger, but he's the bastard son of Duke, that, who was the first man that she ever 
her loved. And eight years after he took her innocence and abandoned her, he's back. Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. I'm very excited. So I have that on audio from a hoopla as well. And then I also have Where the Truth Lives by Mia Sheridan. I read Where the Blame Lies and loved it. It was a really intense romantic suspense. And I know Jess from Honest Fiction read the first book recently and went right into book two and read it as well. So I am very jealous that she flew through those. So I do have it on Audible. It says the director of a local mental health hospital is found murdered. There's a homicide detective who's the first on the scene. The doctor who discovered the body is someone he's familiar with. They had a one night stand and I think that she is the love interest and more bodies appear. There's a devious killer terrorizing the city. So it sounds like a really good romantic suspense for Mia Sheridan that I'm super excited to read. Then I have Puck Me Secretly by Odette Stone. I have just been holding on to this for like the right time because so many people love it and I just need to read it already. Like there's never gonna be a perfect time for a book I think I'll love. Just read it right now. So they're on a plane together and she thinks like the plane's gonna crash and so she hysterically confesses like everything about herself and then the plane did not crash and the first day on her job she stands in front of the hockey team and he is on the hockey team and so it sounds so good. I read a different book. I think I read book three or four in the series already and really really love that too. So I know I like Odette Stone, so very excited to read that one. Next, I have Dead Drop by Tate James. This is book two in the Guild series. I think that's just what it's called. It is the second book to Honey Trap, and these are romantic suspense as well. She is like a trained assassin, and the hero is someone she was supposed to kill, but the other hero is also a trained mercenary assassin guy who's very techy, and I think it's polyamorous. I don't know for sure though, because nobody ended up together in book one, and book one was amazing. Super excited to get to book two. I also have Guild by Raven Kennedy. So Raven Kennedy is going to be at a polycon. My friend Lisa from Remarkably Lisa just binged this entire series, told me I would hate it, but I'm intrigued. So it's all like heat and no plot apparently. I know it went viral on TikTok. I'm intrigued. Like give me a little bit more fantasy romance. So I'm going to try it out. I have Coach Me by Shanora Williams. I forget who told me about this book, but it is a, maybe it was Sam from Sam Reads a Little told me about it. It is a coach athlete romance and it is for running. I don't know if it's cross country or track, but I loved Waking Olivia. I love running. So I had to get this out from KU. Definitely intrigued by this one. I have June 1st by Jennifer Hartman. I have to finish still. I got about 30% in to put it down because I want a day where I can just sit and read it all because it's a very slow burn. I'm 30% in and she's like 13 now. We get from when she is young. Literally like the day before she's born is when the book starts and it's going to be with someone she grows up with. Not blood related but I also know it's very very emotional so hopefully I can sit down one day this month and just read through that entire thing. I also have Scoring a Spouse which Caitlin from The Love Librarian was raving about. The heroine is a soccer player. I love women's soccer so much. I'm obsessed with the US team and she plays in the World Cup and it is with our hero. I don't remember how they met or what the premise is, but she's a soccer player and she has arthritis. So I'm super excited to read this book and I believe she's bisexual. I know one of the characters is. Caitlin was raving about it. I got it off NetGalley. I can't wait to read it. Someone else's Shadow by Monica James. I'm really excited to read as well. All I know is that is a amnesia romance and it sounds like it's going to have some twists. So this recently came out. It's sitting on my Kindle. I definitely want to read this too because I'm going to see Monica for the first time at a Polycon. It's been years since I was supposed to see her and all the signings got canceled. So I'm very excited. And the last book I have is Taken by a Sinner by Michelle Hurd. This is a mafia romance and that's all I know. I just know people have been obsessed with Michelle Hurd. I'm very excited to read this and see what the hype is about because I know people love book one and book two. Hopefully I can read book one and see what it's about, continue on if I like it, but I need more mafia romance in my life so I cannot wait to read this. And that is my TBR for July. Let me know what you're excited to read or if you've read any of these and what I should start with. I would love to hear. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.